Hi there. Oddly, today we're in a garage. I've borrowed Mum's garage here to uh, have a look at a couple things here. One is the horn. The uh, horn still works if I apply power to it, but uh, I assume the switch here or the wire back is not good. Um, I'm also going to have a little bit of look at uh, what's involved in getting the wiper motor out. It's been kind of struggling for a while. I bought some brushes to rebuild the motor there. Whether I rebuild it or not, I'll probably take it over to the uh, electrical guy. It's kind of a pain in the ass up under. I don't know if I'll get there today or not, but the horn is the main thing. There's also the backup lights are out, so I've got some bulbs. And also that intermittent headlight thing I want to have a look at too, but I don't know how much I'm going to get done today, if, if anything, but uh, we're going to give it a go. Ah, it's really strange. You might not be able to see this, but the, uh, the rubber grommet inside there is uh, reversed, so it's stamped right on through, which is kind of weird. So we have to be careful. But it's not a right hand. I don't think it is. There we go. It's kind of a castle nut, but it doesn't have a hole through it for a, uh, for a pin. And not sure if that actually did anything. The astute among you will tell that uh, this isn't really. One of my fortes. It's the first time I've been behind on this anyway. I'm thinking behind there might also be the, um, well, it might be further down, the neutral safety. I don't, I'm not into taking the whole column off, I just wanted to see why she no make noise. Yeah, so the strip in metal there is held away from the back plate by the spring. Once that metal piece touches this back plate, that's all there is to it. Love the smell of brake clean in the morning. Also, there might be a tool that bolts into these two, like a puller. Well, I looked it up, and yes, indeed, there is a puller for these. Supposedly it can be done by hand, but uh, because it's been on there for whatever, most of the internet says you will uh, punch yourself in the face. When we last spoke, we were talking about a uh, puller, so I did go down to Lorco. Wasn't too much. It's probably be the only time I need it in my life, but you never know. Some other poor bastard might need it next time. It's on there fucking hard, bro. Hmm. I kind of feel like I should get the fuck out of the way. That was going off without. Guess if I want to steer now, it'd be a vice grip affair. This is 
is a continuation day of uh, excitement. We're trying to get the horn to work. It did always work, uh, and then, I don't know, maybe a year ago, it stopped working. So I've, uh, yesterday I disassembled this part, took the wheel off. I don't know how much of that's going to get shown because it was hours and hours and hours of fucking around and I had to buy a puller and so I'm not 100% sure uh, where we're picking up here. Um, maybe I'll take you down and show you a little bit of what I'm faced with here. I believe this switch here is what we're dealing with for the horn. <laughs> it's a roller switch. I guess the newer ones are just a uh, spring-loaded pin. <coughs> but this kind of rides on the back side of the, uh, there's a plate on the back of the steering wheel. And when you press down the two uh, levers, it pivots and supposedly pushes this down now. Even with this all disassembled, hitting that button doesn't do, uh, doesn't do anything. I, I don't have the battery connector right now, but. So I don't know whether it's a switch problem or a wiring problem. Up until this point, I've just been assuming it's a. Uh, uh, wires gone out somewhere either in the column or or up in the um, engine compartment You can see somebody's been in here already because that uh, Phillips is stripped right the fuck out Or not uh, not the threads are stripped, but the uh, the head is so that's troublesome Let's See if I can find some of those uh, screws. I'll take out one of the good ones first and Anyway, it's one of those jobs where you kind of tread lightly but at one point you're just you're committed and then um, shit gets real don't know if I can retrofit a little micro switch in here or something that will do the same job or maybe even a micro switch underneath of one of the paddles run my own wire through the column and anyway all those options remain but like I say that I, I don't uh, exactly know what method I'm going to use yet I will say it's much easier to get into the car with the steering wheel in, although you don't have anything to hang on to necessarily. Doesn't look like the switch can come out by itself. It's a part of a larger plastic circular plate, kind of like this. This is what meshes to that, but uh, it's a bit of a bummer. Because even the deeper I go, I, I haven't learned anything. Oh, stop talking to yourself. I'm not talking to myself, talking to the camera legion of loyal fans <laughs> yeah anyway I'm just I'm not I'm not enjoying going through here finding all these plastic parts and uh, just basically considering uh, Murphy's position the other thing I can't really see is when I put the steering wheel on it, has, it says a sh shroud that matches up with this you can't really see whether that ring is even touching this uh, switch. Someone online had said that this spring had worn out to the point where it wouldn't return back to its full height. And that would uh, fix us right there. If it weren't touching it, it wouldn't matter what kind of contact you make, it's not going to fly. A couple of things. I'm half genius and all idiot. Um, weeks ago, or maybe a couple of months ago, when I was contemplating what to, I don't think it's going to work anymore, but when I was contemplating what to do around this whole horn thing, I went looking for places that were selling parts related to the horn circuit, and I forgot that I already ordered a uh, horn relay. Looks identical, well, I got, looks identical to the um, service manual. But I haven't located this yet. I assume it's under the dash somewhere because I think it's on the inside, not the outside. Because whether I install this or not, it is still a place, a central place where I can put power, uh, short tooth pins, and uh, see if the horn blows. So I already did <laughs> purchase this in uh, prior and uh, just forgot all about it. And in the process of uh, looking here, I have not seen that. But because it's screwed, it's um, it's on the fire. It's on the inside of the firewall or something. It shows um, in the electrical diagram. It shows this getting fed by a violet wire coming from the um, starter solenoid, which is on the other side. So 
I don't know. Once I find that, um, I'll try to put some power to it. So I'll be back. We'll see if that has uh, gives us anything. I had already uh, <laughs> wrapped up the thing and was uh, looking at where I would uh, uh, wire in a uh, button. Like regardless of what's going on here, I still need to activate one of these solenoids with a new button. So I I, I can't get away with not knowing where those go and and uh, whether they're working or not. Talk soon. Okay, now it's back. That's all it was. That, uh, <laughs> that regulator. I don't mind buying the parts that were for in here because um, yesterday I noticed that a piece had been cut, uh, broken off of the... Uh, so it won't sound this way, it has to be this side. Okay. That's good. Um, fuck, mom will probably come out wondering what the hell's going on. Excellent. And the freaking solenoid isn't up there. It's out on the thing. But it just, it was ancient. And uh, blended in with the uh, engine bay. Like way in the corner here. It's like, if, yeah, had I seen that initially, you've got no problem. Okay, fuck. I guess I might as well. Not a lot of it's going to be seen because it was just a lot of experimentation and taking off the steering wheel and seeing what's behind there. Um, got scared of what's behind there. Already a couple of broken parts and uh, things that would be quite easy to break on your own. Um, did manage to tighten up the turn signal stock because I found out where that is. Yeah, so that feels nice and solid now. Um, anyway, yeah, I got into the column here, couldn't really figure shit out. I've been under the dash, a couple of uh, electrical connectors there, and I thought, you know, maybe there's a bad wire somewhere. And, uh, yeah, that horn relay, which uh, I saw electrically on the, uh, on the electrical diag the Chrysler Plymouth electrical diagrams, and was wondering, uh, even if that thing is still working, where will I find it? Because um, I can use my little power probe there and um, see if the wiring comes up to the thing here. That would have been, um, you know, that's what, kind of where I wanted to start. But for some reason, I thought all that shit was in here. I did also order behind the hub here in the steering wheel, so I will have to take it off once again. But you can still buy the contact ring um, that's all nice and shiny. Now it's the one that I cleaned earlier, so it's looking pretty good right now. But for 30 bucks, I thought, why not? Um, I already had the solenoid, which ended up fixing the problem. But also that uh, piece in here that is uh, cracked and does the whole wobbly thing here, that um, I'm hoping it'll fit because I think it was for a 67. And uh, <clears throat> yesterday I was complaining a lot about the quality of the documentation, which uh, isn't always isn't really usually a problem with um, some of the other Chrysler, um, official Chrysler service manuals that I have. And uh, I don't know enough about uh, what kind of Valiants were in um, Australia, but I know it was just as popular down there as it was in North America as far as uh, uh, people owning them. But they have their own slight variation, just like Canada has its, uh, this is a Canadian made Valiant and a Custom 200 didn't come out in the US for 66. Uh, I think it was called a Dart 270 GT is this body style in the US. So sometimes when I'm looking for 66 Valiant stuff, it ends up going to the Australian um, thing because they had a they had this a very similar model to this in the same year where the US did not. But I was noticing that they were talking about stuff that wasn't, uh, and also I'm ignorant to what AP5 and AP6 are. And now I have a better idea um, after looking it up, but I couldn't figure out why it wasn't saying custom 200 or Valiant 100 or whatever. It was saying AP5 or AP6. Two different years of Valiants in Australia. So that was another source of confusion with the documentation I downloaded yesterday. Um, it did mention that there, you know, the, the electrical diagram did show the, the horn relay. So I can't be more pleased. I just have to find out a way to uh, 
hang it there and uh, we're done. So that's good. Only two days of work. Hornworks. Talk soon. Bye. Yeah, perfectly the same uh, layout, which is where, which is how I knew. As soon as I saw this uh, one connector with a right angle, two posts like that, I knew that we had found our thing. I do notice it's uh, backwards. Not a lot of length on this. All right, no, you can fuck see the shit. What the fuck? Anyway, the, the the way that the cables have been for 55 years or whatever, you know, they don't they don't like to uh, go outside of their own realm. So yeah, if I pound the, uh, I'll put it in the vise, take away that tab, because right now it's interfering. It'll work. To the vise. Yeah, vise did a good job. He basically just folded that locating pin uh, flat. So now it won't interfere as much with the positive locating bin pin on that one. So obviously design change, a reversal has taken place at one point. Here's that. Okay, she, yeah, here's where shit's gonna get loud. Excellent day. Dig it. This job could have been done yesterday uh, had I went right for that source. So anyway, we got ourselves another part for the uh, wall of shame and failure. Although I will say uh, this is uh, probably the original thing in here, so uh, you know, pretty good. It's uh, you know, fifty whatever years old. So let's see if this one lasts that long. Alright, talk to you soon.